Every couple of years, Jed Booth and some of the other ranchers raise the bands of wild horses and ship them off to the market. There's Booth, over there. Me and my men never go on the drives. We sort of feel as if the horses belonged here. They lived here. This is their home. Here they raise their families. The horses have families too? Why, yes, of course, Tommy, just the same as we do. And that's why I sort of feel as if it weren't fair to drive them off like they are doing down there now. They got that big black horse again. Diablo? Yes. <laughs> they got him last year and the year before that. But he's a pretty clever horse. Pretty smart. Oh, that's all right, Whitey, that's all right. You and I know about Diablo, don't we? <laughs> Whitey know Diablo? Well, yes, of course he does. Well, I'll tell you about him. Yeah, don't forget to tell him about the little mule, too. Ah, uh, you better tell him about the mule, Pete. <laughs> the mule was a friend of yours. What do you mean? <laughs> You figure that out. <laughs> I want to hear about the apple. Well, you see, Tommy, Whitey used to be a wild horse, just like the apple on the rest of them down there. Two years ago, Booth come in with his men and he captured Whitey and Diablo along with the others. Yep, that's when they caught the mule, too. Yeah, that's right, they caught him. But uh, Whitey and Diablo, they escaped. Yeah, the little mule followed Whitey and a few mares. Black fella? No, sir. No, he plays a lone hand. Pretty soon he come across a pinto, and he's hurt. And immediately they begun to fight. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Diablo put up a good fight. But he was no match for the black horse. Diablo licked that pizzo and took possession of his herd. <laughs> I reckon he thought that he could whip anything. Oh, that's a long story. Ain't it, old fella? Yep, and more exciting than what happens to most humans. Gosh, Uncle Hank. Yeah? You've got to tell me. I'll tell you what I'll do, Tommy. Come on, get down. Now, tomorrow we'll get up early, and while we're going over to watch the drive, I'll tell you the story of White. And when his days, and when his days on this world are over, from you, Tommy. Oh, I can't sing. Oh, yes, you can. I heard Slim teaching you a song the other day. Oh, well, we was only fools. Oh, go ahead, Tommy. Sing him the song. I want to be a great big buckaroo Just like the other cowboys that I know I want to be a great big buckaroo and ride at every rodeo. I want to mount my horse and ride the plains and down upon the flat. I want to use one hand to hold the range and with the other swing my lariat. Craven for a cowboy's life so merry. When payday comes around to town we'd go. Oh, I could handle any herd of steer and stop a stampede too. I wanna be, I wanna be a great big buckaroo like you. Morning, son. Where's Uncle Hank? Well, he's over by the last barn. Thanks, Johnny. Shall I saddle Tommy's horse for him? Oh, you might as well. We'll be leaving soon. All right. Since you taught him how to cinch his old saddle, he don't want anybody fooling with his horse. He wants to do everything for himself. You know, he's like a little maverick. No father. No mother. You know, Peter, don't seem right for a little fellow like that to be without at least 
one parent does. Pretty tough. But then I guess he's lucky to have an uncle like you to look after him. Oh, he goes along without complaining. But sometimes the little fella seems to wonder about things. Yep, he sure can ask a heap of questions, can't he? <laughs> you said it, but he's like all little boys. I reckon it is kind of hard living out here with us old fellas with no kids to play with. I oh. guess city folks see more and learn quicker. I don't know about that. Seems to me nature laid down the same set of rules for all of us. Kind of universal. Makes no difference where we live. Maybe you're right, Hank. Here he comes now. Morning, Tommy. Morning, Uncle Hank. Morning, Pete. Morning. You see, I got up early. I'm all ready to hear that story. Fine. Well, come on. Let's get some stuff and get started. Got a lot to do. <laughs> I go again. Forgetting Whitey. Did you think that I'd forgotten you? No, side boss. I wouldn't forget you. No, I know what day this is. You're going to have a run. This is your holiday, Whitey. And we're going right up to the gate. <laughs> uh, you see, Tommy, how well he knows where the gate is? You know where the gate is, don't you, Whitey? I'll say you do. <laughs> now, stay back, Tom. Go on here, Whitey. There you go, for your run. Bad up, boy. No, he hasn't run away yet. Why do you turn him out every day like this? Oh, just part of a bargain I made with him. How can you make a bargain with a horse? <laughs> Tommy, after I've told you the story of Whitey, you'll understand how it is that I figure that sometimes horses are like people with the same kind of problems. There you are. Why aren't you riding Whitey today? Oh, I rode Whitey yesterday pretty hard. So today's his holiday to do as he pleases, huh? You stick me up, I. Come on, let's get started. Uh -huh. You know, there's going to be plenty doing over there at the drive. While Diablo was stealing the Pinto's mares, becoming leader of the herd, sort of setting himself up as king, Whitey went back to pick up what Boo had left him of his herd and set out to find a new home on water. They roamed west towards the foothills of the big mountains, where they found water. And the mule, he went along too. That's right, Tommy. Whitey figured that maybe they could live here in peace and contentment, sort of enjoy the freedom of their newfound home. Whitey watched over his herd, but one day their relentless enemy, man, discovered him. It was Boo who had tracked Whitey from a roundup where he'd made his escape. Whitey had to act quickly. He found a way to outwit He let Boo see him and then led him away on a long, hard chase so that the herd and the mares could make their escape. safely away from Boo and his men, Whitey led them further north to an enchanting spot where there was a big lake 
this was far from the beaten paths of man. There, in the peaceful beauty of the new home, Whitey began to think of romance. You're going to like this, Tommy. Oh, <laughs> shucks. Boys don't like that love stuff much. I know. <laughs> but it brought about a change in Whitey's life. Kind of like the first step towards his ultimate destiny. Anyway, quite his pal, the mule, got a big kick out of it. You don't have to be a mule to know that love is the same in any language. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Pete. But <laughs> it helps. You ought to know. <laughs> oh, go ahead with your story. <laughs> well, well, Tommy, there isn't much you can say about love. Why did he pick the fine-looking pinto mare for his mate? <laughs> Then, one day, there was a new member added to Whitey's family. As fine a colt as ever was born to a mare. Whitey was proud of his young son. He taught him all the lore of the range, raised him so that one day he would be strong and brave and smart enough to take care of himself. Yes, and maybe become leader of a herd like his daddy. <laughs> showing their affection. For a spell, the herd lived in quiet and contentment. The colt continued to grow into a fine young fellow. But there were many things Whitey still had to teach him. Like the day the little fella got frightened of some cottontail rabbits. <laughs> of course, they wouldn't harm a soul, but, but Whitey had to show this to his son.
cold wandered away from the herd and got lost. He was frightened as he strayed about alone in the dark. He went out to search for him and brought him back safely to his mother. This happiness Whitey and his herd had found was destined to be rudely shattered. Who soon picked up Whitey's tracks and located his new home and near the lake. But he didn't catch him, did he? Now, nah, don't get ahead of our story, boy. Who did dig a pit track, hoping that Whitey would get into it, and then he'd be captured? <laughs> well, what was funny about that? Ah, uh, you'll find out, son. Gonna tell me, Uncle Hank? Yep. He did build a trap for him. Ah, but Whitey was too smart. You see, Whitey had an awful lot of trouble with Boo, and he was always on the alert, ready to protect his herd. Whitey came one day with his herd into the vicinity of Boo's traps. You was tagging along as usual, wasn't he, Hank? Yes. <laughs> Wherever the herd went, that mule went right along. Anyway, something unexpected happened that day. He rescued the mule from Boo. The herd had moved away to safety. Now another enemy of 
white here. Diablo, the black horse. Diablo proceeded to kidnap Whitey's mate. Whitey searched unsuccessfully for his mate. She had gone back to the herd after escaping from Diablo, but the cold was still lost in the wilderness.
Why do you say is the little coat? <laughs> but the poor little fellow was pretty scared. You can't blame him. It's no fun to have a pack of hungry wolves chasing you. Right. Whitey had a lot of trouble with Wolf and Diablo and the wolves. Hmm. His troubles was only beginning. You wait till you grow up and you'll find out. Troubles always comes in punches. Guy, it's almost like Whitey was a human being. With a family, you know. Yes, Tommy. I guess they had the difficulties and the family squabbles. <laughs> Just like us folks. Just wait till you grow up and get married and have your family problems, too. I don't think I'll ever get married, Pete. Oh, wait till you see how sweet it is to make up. Look, Uncle Hank. Pete's crying. What? Oh, <laughs> so would you be if you was eating the kind of apple he's eating. <laughs> Oh, I like onions. Apples don't agree with me no how. Tell him what happened next, how the family got together again. Well, after Whitey had driven off the wolves, he and the little colt went on through the night until they arrived at their camp. But Whitey wasn't pleased about his mare having run off with Diablo, so... Oh, a boy. And so the little colt Seeing that there was discord in the family, he decided he'd have to do something about it. And you know the old saying, a little child shall lead them? Well, here it is. Yeah. All right, boys. About the time that the little colt had brought about peace in the family, Diablo came back. <laughs> this time, 
I didn't I didn't have it out of the back. Once and for all. Idea. No sense of trying to rope him down in there. You fire that rim and I'll take care of this. Smoke him to the gap and we'll catch him as they come out. Okay.
two days later, he wandered into the South Corral at the ranch. And you know Jim the foreman? Well, he doctored up his poor little burnt leg. and the Cole's mother were watching him. So he figured he'd get out of the way and see what they'd do. Like any mother would. It took him a little while to make up his mind just what he wanted to do about it. time out there in the wild country. But when he found out that we wanted to be friendly and we didn't mean any harm to his family, he decided to stay. That's how I come to make the bargain with him. I promised him that I'd let him run loose every day out all over the wild country if he promised not to run away. Because he's still a wild horse at heart. So, Tommy, you see how it pays to keep your word with people. Then what happened to Diablo? Oh, Diablo's still a wild horse. And in this year's drive, they caught him again.
like he's on his way. I wonder how they can expect to hold that horse. <laughs> Diablo's loose again. Somewhere out on the range, out in the wild horse country, there's another drama start. I don't think Whitey would be scared. Because he's learned there's more contentment in an ordered, civilized life than in running wild. You know, a lot of people could take lessons from Whitey because, after all, he's a wild horse at heart. But he's satisfied. Ain't you, Whitey? Satisfied to be guided by good and gentle influence. Thank <laughs> you. 